Hi kids, welcome back. We got part three of the tips and tricks. Got 10 new ones for you to check out. If you haven't seen the first two, check those out too. Uh, got some good stuff in there. Hope you enjoy it. Let's do it. Okay, so we want to take this off of here. We got some options, right? You know, a um, couple, couple tools get the job done. Of course, absolutely not. Um, pretty easy. If you go and check out uh, my Fiero repair video watch list, uh, you can kind of see. Uh, there's a really easy way to do it. I've done it before when I worked at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to uh, debadge some vehicles. That's just some of this stuff, some dental floss. Um, you know, I, I got the wax stuff, but I don't really know if it makes a whole diff big bunch of difference. But look at that. I mean, it's already sawn right through it. Oh, man, you broke it. So what? Um, just keep kind of gingerly sawing through there. Take your time, let the tool do the work always, and it'll go right on through. I mean, I'm making progress here without you guys really seeing it, but uh, the flat stuff uh, does seem to be a little less prone to snapping off, and I'm going real fast here, and uh, it'd probably been a little better if I would have uh, had this out in the sun, but uh, it does come off. And it doesn't really mar up any paint, which uh, as you can see the paint on this ain't the greatest. But uh, we're not going to take this all off. I just wanted to show you what what you can do to get it done. Um, like everything else, this isn't the only way to do it. But man, you know that's cheap enough. You don't even need to buy the you know the good uh, reach, which I don't know Johnson Johnson or whoever makes this stuff. I've used the cheaper stuff before and. Uh, Works really good. Um, this one, you know, it, it's on an angle and it's a big, big contact area. So it will take you a little while, but this is something you don't want to rush. Take your time. You won't tear the emblem up. And you can clean off the adhesive with, uh, you know, some goo gone or goo go off afterwards. And, and you're, besides the paint probably is going to be, you know, faded here more than it is under here because it's protected. But you really won't ever see that it's been on there. And, uh, that's how you do it with uh, little or no cost. Dental floss, it's your friend. I think I might have gotten this one out of the magazines too. Um, you got a plastic lens or something, tail light, side marker light, uh, even a you know, plastic headlight cover. Um, pretty cheap and sometimes free if you go to your dentist regular. Um, give you these little sample tubes of toothpaste this is great plastic polish uh, it's it's not really aggressive but it's it's good enough to uh, kind of get some oxidation or uh, you know road grime or some light scratches I don't mean like you, you know took some 40 grit to it or something but uh, I haven't really found a, a huge difference in uh, in what you got mint or whitening or whatever the heck you could have all the options you know but uh but it's cheap um you know don't smell bad either but uh it will brighten them up quite a bit and it's something you can rinse off pretty easy um you know this is totally random i just grabbed this and started rubbing on it this is a this bike is a 2000 so it's getting up there. I probably haven't actually cleaned that lens ever other than just washing the whole bike. But I don't know if you can see the, you know, the difference that it made. It wasn't in bad shape before, but if you got something that might, might be something that is set out in the sun for a long time, which I have done this before on some of my old cars from the sixties. And, uh, you know, and it's never going to look brand new, but you can get it back to where it looks presentable for a driver. 
And uh, if it isn't goofed up like this one wasn't, um, it, it pops right back. Now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but look at, you know, the face of this that I just kind of lightly hit. And you see how much time I spent on it. And then the, the beveled edge here, which I did not. And it's, it's not goofed up, but it's just cloudy from being outside. Um, you know, we, this, sadly, this bike has set outside at, at times when I ran out of room with a cover on it. So it got some, it got some weather on it, but, uh, it popped right back out. You know, if I went, went to town on this, I could get it to look like it just popped out of the mold brand new. And it's just toothpaste, man. Nothing trick about that. And, uh, this is one of the many, many samples that I get when I go to the dentist and uh, it's more than you can use with regular dental dental care so uh, pick some up and if you don't have any go uh, go to the dollar store and uh, buy a tube of it and it, it's pretty good there's plastic polish out there but there's a markup I don't know whether or not it's the same stuff that you get or not but uh, hey like I said you go to the dentist it's free plastic polish for not a lot of money All right, if you got anything with a headlight that's been built in the U.S. at least in the past 30 years or so, uh, you got a, a composite setup here where you got a bulb inside and a uh, plastic lens on the outside. Now, I don't know why they went away from sealed beams besides they could get some you know interesting shapes on the front of cars, uh, mold out of plastic, or if it was because of the fear that glass would cut people. Who knows? But the downfall to all this stuff is is that plastic just gets like a like a plaque built up over time, as I'm sure you've seen, and they end up getting to where it looks like a uh, like a shower door or something. You can't see through it at all, and there's not much light coming through it. And there's been an entire industry grown up to get them clean again. You know, you got stuff like this. I've used this; it works pretty good. Uh, stuff like this, like multi-part kits, where you got you know pre-treat and then a polish and a you know this clarifying compound i think it's final step or something but you know it's uh it's an investment and uh that stuff isn't cheap i mean you know you're talking 25 35 45 50 bucks or something for this stuff was well, something that uh is uh out there on the internet i believe is where i found it out is is just get you some bug spray um now the 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 magic ingredient whether you can see this on the bottom here is this deet it's probably something that you don't want to be around a whole lot, but uh, this a can of this costs a whole heck of a lot less than either of those things I showed you before, and you just spray it on there, which this doesn't need it. Spray it on there and uh, and kind of scrub it down a little bit, and uh, it might take if it's really bad, it might take a little bit, but if you keep after it, um, we've got a 99 Bravada, uh, which I was going to demonstrate, but it's out and about right now. Um, use it on that it keeps them it keeps them pretty clear now the only downside i would say to this stuff is is that it just doesn't last quite as long as the as the um you know stuff that's purpose purpose made which for all i know this has got deed in it you know that's the thing that's making it work but this this seems to last a little longer the mothers and the turtle wax and and what have you you know mcguire's whoever they all it's all good stuff i mean don't get me wrong that is that is a good solution for you, but it costs a lot of money, and uh, this stuff it doesn't. Uh, so if you got to put it on a little bit longer, you're ahead of the game. Even if you got to do it two, three times as much, but I spray it on there, wipe it down, brightens them white right back up, um, and the bugs probably don't like it either. So there you go, cheap headlight cleaning. Um, keep your eyes on the road, shine it out, bright it up. Make it a little bit easier to see for not a lot of money. Okay, you guys have seen this stuff before. Boom mat, hush mat, dynamat. Um, lots of different names for it. But this is not what it is. It's this stuff right here. Right out of the home improvement section where you got your uh, roofing supplies, I believe. Um... Don't know if there's other brands of this or not. This is the stuff that I get. 
I don't know what the price difference is, but it's it's significant. And uh, you're going to find a lot of people say, don't use this stuff. It'll stink and smell and, you know, don't work and seal in rust. And I don't know. I've, I've seen a bunch of them. But I will tell you, the picture that I just showed you is of my Cutlass. Uh, I've got it in two other cars uh, that have been in there in 100 degree heat for many, many years. Uh, in my Corvair, it's probably been in there. 15 years uh, in the rampage it's probably been in there a decade so uh, is the brand name stuff better yeah probably I think it's a little thicker thicker but uh, you can do two two three layers of this stuff for probably less than you can do with the uh, the expensive stuff it cuts just the same you can cut it with scissors get you a, a little Wallpaper roller is, is what I use, a little wooden wooden wheel roller. Roll it down in the crevices. Uh, I've taken the, like the end of like a snow scraper to kind of push it down in there. Uh, get, it, get it all stuck down in there really good. It works great, and it's, it's cheap, and it's easy to get. Uh, if you got access to the brand name stuff, by all means, use it. But uh, this is something you can go get without having to order it and put it in there and uh, maybe save yourself a little bit of money. All right, so what do we got here? Um, these are some setup stands. Uh, not my idea, uh, but my take on them. Uh, the, the plans or instructions that I found were using two by fours. These are actually two by threes because if you hadn't uh, noticed, uh, lumber has gone through the roof. So the difference in strength between a two by four and a two by three in this application is, uh, is minimal. Now I went over the top and I Turn the screws 90 degrees so there's two diagonal this way, two diagonal next way, skipping all the way down, glued all the joints, uh, sprayed them with polyurethane. But uh, will you use these that often? Uh, I used them to set the pinion angle on the cutlass because I wanted to, to load the suspension and get them set up uh, so I could actually get a real world measurement out of it. But you can leave the car on them if you want. In, uh, it, Put them on your dollies, roll it around. Uh, I've, I've seen that done. Uh, Fitzy's Fabrication, he's got an old Mustang. He's got that set up. The thing's blocked up off the ground on dollies. Rolls around, works fine. Uh, loan these out to a buddy. They're not heavy, and they don't take up a lot of room, so you can throw them up, up in the loft or wherever you need to and get them out of the way. And like I said, saying lumber is cheap right now is, is kind of a relative thing, but uh, Get you some get you some two by threes or whatever you can i wouldn't go any kind of one by stuff or, or two by twos or something like that you're you're really pushing your luck there because it's you know the tires resting in this cradle here you know the formed by this so you're asking a whole lot if you're getting much thinner than this but uh it's, it's not a big deal um with uh going with the two by three if you got access to that if you got two by fours ball means use those it's just going to be a little bit heavier and uh you know your big money is going to be in uh, the lumber these days but you know i'd say in the past it would be in the, the screw screws in the glue um these all last me a lifetime so get you some setup stands are good for getting it getting it up off the ground to to, to work on it uh without trying to squeeze underneath it without uh, loading the sp suspension or like I said you can put it on the dollies and uh, not a lot of cost it's a it's a good tool to have so build you a set don't cost a lot of money all right so what's all this garbage um, everybody's uh, familiar with zip ties or cable ties or whatever you want to call them but uh, they're great for holding stuff out of the way, but what if you just want a temporary solution? What if you want to uh, secure something for a little bit and then take it back off? Say you're working on something and the wiring or the cables keep falling into your face or where you're working at. Well, you can use a zip tie, yeah, but then you got to cut it. And then you got to make sure you find the pieces that went flying and you got to throw it away. So what, what do you do? Well, these are pretty much free. This is... Uh, you know what I'd call a bread tie, maybe, but uh, I heard uh, Eric Stoltz call them twistics in Pulp Fiction, so maybe that's a West Coast thing. Regardless of, of what the proper name is, 
it's it's just a little piece of mechanics wire basically with um, a plastic coating on it uh, like you'd find on a loaf of bread and uh, you can wrap it around there and uh, take it off really easy twist it up pretty tight uh, they're strong I wouldn't you know roll down the road with one holding something on there but they keep stuff out of the way for you so you can get your work done and you just twist them off of there if it snaps off so what you know next time you get some hot dog buns or something you got more of them uh the other thing if they don't have those on there they got these little um kind of tag looking things on there that snap on too now what am i keeping these well i'll tell you these are nice uh because you can write on them if you got some some wiring or cables and you don't know left right up down starter positive negative whatever the case may be you can kind of write on these things and snap it on there and it'll stay on any multitude of sizes and it won't fall off it'll slide back and forth you pop it off of there and chuck them you know put some tape on it if you're you know super cheap like me and reuse them again but uh, they're they're pretty darn handy and every time you get any kind of baked good they got either this or that on there so you know keep you a little bit of, of a stash of them and uh, kind of helps you out to organize what you're doing or uh, at least simplify some of the, the work where you don't need that third hand. This can be that third hand, and it's free or cheap. Dare to be different. Okay, so you got all these cool things, and you put them in bins or get them sorted out some way, and now how do you remember where what goes where well these are super cheap i think this is 25 bucks the tape or label that goes in it um, it's five bucks or something like that they make paper and they make plastic ones i will tell you in a garage environment uh you want the plastic ones it's a little bit more money but uh the paper ones start peeling off you see that up there um and they don't take stains very well the plastic ones are, are pretty tough um you can save something that you use off some uh, off often and just reprint it um you can see you know i got tape on there that i've written on but uh eh, you know you got something real complicated to write it it starts getting hard to make it legible uh it just it just looks neater you can glance at it and you can see you know what the heck is in there so um not free but definitely cheap and it helps you get organized. You, you may think, oh, I don't need this. I can do without it. But I'm telling you, I resisted for a long time to get something like this. Used it at work on stuff. And I was like, man, this is the way. Because you can uh, you can definitely take it to the next level and just walk up and say, oh, heck, that's, that's what I need. Grab it and go. All right, this may seem like crazy, crazy hoarder stuff, but it's not. Um, you're always going through some kind of container if you're eating food or, you know, buying any kind of product, medicine, whatever. Um, my granddad used to put, uh, mason jars or baby food or whatever. He'd nail the lid up underneath his workbench and, uh, screw whatever he had onto it, you know, kind of thread it on the bottom, pull it out. It was pretty slick until you drop that glass jar. Uh, my test for whether I keep these things or not is that right there. Did the lid pop up or did it break? Nope. That's a good one. Uh, that was a mayonnaise jar that hit the dirt there. Um, this was uh, some kind of spices. But uh, the cool thing about this one right here that I got marked with our handy dandy label maker. Because um, I told you before, if uh, you go back into some of my other videos, the Vaporust stuff does work. But uh, it, it gets wrecked pretty quick. And you want to kind of keep it sealed up and clean. Um... This was some kind of spices or something, and it's got a little strainer on the top. You pop that strainer out. Uh, see if I can do this one-handed here. So you put your nuts and bolts or whatever the case may be. Something you want to de-rust. You put them down in here. You shake it up, you know, with the lid on, of course. And then when you're done, you can pour this, transfer it into something else, and uh, kind of drain it out, pour it back in there. Um, make, makes for a pretty cool little strainer and that uh, that also acts as a gasket to keep it sealed so do you keep everyone that you ever use heck no that's that's crazy that is hoarder 
you know, TV reality show uh, madness. Uh, I, I'm not there yet, but I do keep these things. And when I figure out when well, I'm not using these, I throw them away. But uh, a lot of the ones, uh, peanut butter is a really good one. Uh, it's a pretty good sized jar. Got a really strong thread on it. You can put nuts and bolts in there and you can kind of use it as a parts washer. Um, get like a, you know, Jif or Skippy or whatever the heck your, your favorite brand is. You know, clean it out if, if you know if the smell bothers you or whatever you can do. You can go to the whole nine yards. You can peel the label off. Who cares? You can get it. You can get it wherever you want, and you're not going to destroy it because these things are made to go cross country and not break. But uh, a peanut butter or a mayonnaise jar like that, you put it in there. Put your nuts and bolts in there. Put a little bit of uh, dishwashing liquid in it. Um, agitate it. It it you be shocked. You shake that thing up, you know, like this, and uh, it'll knock the, they'll bang into each other and knock all the dirt off of them. Do that a couple times. You don't need a parts washer, really. Uh, you can do it with soap and water. And uh, just storing stuff. I've got uh, got some of the containers that have labels on them that just, you know, have uh, the thread size and uh, whatever whatever bolt I got in there or, or parts. Uh, it's it's a good way because you can put it in there and if you bump it and knocks off the shelf and hits the floor, uh, it don't break and, and you still got it. And you can take it out to where you're working. If you got something like pop rivets or something like that to where you're just consuming a whole bunch of them, you know, you got them in a little container like this. It keeps them in there and keeps them handy. Keep the lid on it and you don't drop them because the factory package, you know, let's face it, it's on a card hanging on a peg. You can't transport it like that you're going to knock them and they're going to roll everywhere and you're going to lose two-thirds of them so um you know recycle reuse reduce um and uh, make your life a little bit easier for uh basically nothing and then when you're done with it throw it in the recycle bin okay my uh my real job is uh product design engineer and I love something that's toolless. Now what does that mean? Well, it means you don't need a tool to take it apart. You can use your your hand to get it loose or tighten it or adjust it or whatever the operation is. You don't need a screwdriver or a wrench or whatever. Um, why is that important? Well, if you're using something every day, like a machine tool, uh, it gets it gets kind of uh, a hassle to go get the right wrench or, you know, some, some tools I have like that. I got the, I got the right wrench, you know, an extra one kind of chained to it or, or taped to it or something like that. But that's eh, not ideal. Uh, what we're looking at here is maybe, maybe 10 bucks worth, worth of stuff here. So it isn't free, but it's cheap. These are, these are knobs. Um, some of them have a kind of a, th a stud built into them. You know, I got two of them kind of married together here just for space. But uh, here's one that, that uh, doesn't, it's just a knob with a stud on it, or they've got a through hole um, or a, uh, a blind hole to where you can tighten it up. Now, I've got a, a Chinese bandsaw, horizontal vertical bandsaw, and everything on it was, you had to have a tool for it, man, it just sucked. And they had little little wrenches that went with it. It was just, it's just so fiddly that I just didn't want to mess with it. So I pulled all those off and replaced them all with with these knobs um one, one type or the other and uh like i said this is this is one of the assortment packs that you can get you know and you know i hate to feed the beast but you know this is from amazon but uh you know you can get you can get a different you know set of set of these uh for metric and standard and to suit whatever you're doing you know for me a lot of the a lot of the import tools that i got are, are metric and um you can kind of swap them out and you don't have to go grab a special tool for that. The uh, air cleaner nuts on the 2.5, the Iron Duke and the Fiero, um, they're really funky and I think you can get the right ones, but I was just like, man, I'm done with this. Uh, I got I got some of these on there to hold it down. They work great and I don't have to grab a tool and they tighten up really nice. So get you some, you know, kind of universal knobs. I mean, make your life easier. It's it's all about reducing motion and saving time because you start adding that up. This took me five minutes each time I did it, and I do it every time I go out into the shop. Well, that's time you don't get back. So is it worth five bucks to save four hours a year? It is to me. Nobody works for free.
All right, here's a little bit of a, a tip and a history lesson rolled into one. Uh, Phillips screwdrivers. Um, yeah. I'm sure we've all fought with them before. Um, but the reason we fight with them is because they were meant to cam out. And what I mean is they're meant to pop out. Um, this is before we had torque sensing machines uh, and the different sizes are, they're designed to where they get to a certain torque and they just they just pop out of the screw well that's great when you're putting it together but when we, when you're taking it apart and it's corroded you just strip them out and it, it's just awful right um, but you got to have them or do you because if you got an old Japanese bike you've probably stripped every single one out taking it apart and uh, the reason is is because you didn't know what i didn't know is those are not phillips screws they are called jis screws and they have a slightly different profile now they got the you know kind of crosshead kind of deal here whether that'll focus or not but you can see there's a there's a much steeper point on the right side of the phillips screw than the JS, JIS screw on the right. And I think JIS is Japanese industrial standard, like, um, you know, DIN, which is the German standard, you know, they or ISO for the world, or ANSI for the United States. But uh, whether or not the Japanese said we got a better idea or they didn't want to pay the uh, royalty to the inventor of the Phillips screws, I do not know. But the screws on those old bikes are JIS screws. So who cares? Um, well, these fit and they'll crank in and out like crazy. And you can tell them a lot of times because they'll have a little dot on the screw. If you look at the head of the screw, you know, have the plus sign on there and there'll be a little dot in there on uh, a lot of these old Japanese bikes. Um, again, who cares? Well, get you some JIS screws and here's why. Because Phillips screws do not work for JIS. But JIS work great for Phillips screws. And they're the only real way to get out JIS screws without tearing them up. But man, these will, these will dig into a Phillips screw and they'll pull them out. And you won't need a screw extractor or heat or whatever, usually. So um, I haven't found a really great brand name to get. These are, you know, just internet purchase but uh, I mean, they come in sizes. I think they're, you know, like zero, one, two, three, you know, like, like Phillips are, but they, uh, they dig into a Phillips screw and they will just bulldog them and pull them right out of there, man. Um, get you some JIS screwdrivers. You won't regret it. They're not a lot of money and, uh, they'll, they'll work for the Phillips. So why not? Well, all right, there's another one in the can. We're definitely daring to be different, so I need you to like, subscribe, and share. Do all that homework, and we'll see you next time on Smith Motorworks.